I think the meaning of what critical theory is has shifted over the last few years, actually. It, it's tightened, it's narrowed in our society. So when you talk about critical theory these days, most people understand that uh, to mean theories of society that are influenced by the Frankfurt School of Critical Theory. Um, Adorno, Horkheimer, Marcuse and so forth, are really quite profoundly Marxist outlook um, and people will also know that there's a critical race theory uh, that draws on on some of those same ideas but actually that's only one type of critical theory and I think if we restrict ourselves only to that narrow definition then we really risk becoming blind to bigger things that are going on in society and I really want to insist on a broader sense of critical theory. It's the sense that I was first familiar with. You know, I mentioned this unit that I did as an undergraduate, modern critical theory. That wasn't about the Frankfurt School. It was about different ways of looking at society and engaging with it and valuing certain things in it. And often these ways were really profoundly in disagreement with each other. And then I guess the question arises, well, if, you know, you're including Derrida and Foucault and Freud and Marx and all these other people um, and feminism and uh, queer theory and eco theory and on and on and on as critical theories, then what is it that they've got in common? How would you define this broader sense? And the best way that I've come up with is that critical theories make certain things in the world viable in the sense that they make them believable. Um, they show you how to look at the world in a certain way so that certain things become possible in the world. Uh, so they make things viable. They also make certain things in the world visible. So they draw your attention to certain aspects of society or certain ways of behaving that you might have missed otherwise. And thirdly, they make certain things in the world valuable. They teach you what to desire, what to praise and what to condemn in society. And I think that's a, a good working definition of what a critical theory is. It's a, a theoretical approach to the whole of life that makes certain things viable, certain things visible and certain things valuable. I've always been really interested in how people think, how people who are not me make sense of the world with a tools and resources that they've got at their disposal. And I suppose it all came to a head when I went up to university. So you can picture me as a relatively young Christian in a big arts faculty in a secular university. And every week we're getting thrown these different critical theories to write essays on. I remember one unit in particular, it was my favourite unit at university throughout my whole undergraduate degree. It was called Modern Critical Theory. Uh, and basically every week we get a different critical theorist to study. We'd have a week on Derrida, a week on Foucault, a week on Marx, a week on Freud and so on. And as I was doing my best to grapple with these thinkers to try and churn out these essays on them, it, it struck me that they're all really doing the same thing. They're all making certain things in the world visible to us and they're all teaching us how to care about certain things in the world. And I had the great blessing to also be a member of a wonderful Bible teaching church during my undergraduate degree. And the, and the church was doing very similar things. Every week they were preaching a passage from the scriptures that had help us, among other things, to, to see the world in a certain way, to live in the world in a certain way, and to value things in the world in, in a certain way. And it struck me that the Bible has really fresh and engaging and challenging things to say in this conversation that was going on among these critical theorists in, in my unit. But nobody was thinking to bring it into the conversation. There was no sort of remote chance of the Bible getting a seat at the table in modern critical theory. Um, and, and that just struck me as um, incredibly sad and also selling the Bible short. I, I think that the, the Bible does have very powerful 
innovative things to say in this area. And so I just started at that point trying to find ways of, of bringing the Bible into that conversation and trying to view that conversation through a biblical lens, I guess.